So what was a li little bit harder to do is to do a balance computation. And, and I did that for Kilo 3D just because I wasn't sure what the wing, uh, what I needed to put the wing. And um, you, you need to start with the weight estimate. So you need to do all of that first. So, but then the key point to doing a, uh, a balance computation is coming up, and there's different names for this. Some people call this a reference datum or, or a datum line. Um, I don't care what you call it, you know, uh, it's just a name. But you basically need to come up with a point on the airplane that everything is going to be measured uh, against. Okay? So you're going to be, you know, measuring uh, with, um, with the distances to that, to, that, to that point. And, you know, sometimes they'll put it, you know, at the quarter cord point. Sometimes it'll be in the wing leading edge. Sometimes it's on the firewall. Sometimes it's right on the nose of the airplane. But it, it, what, I, what I've done, and I have a spreadsheet that's, that's going to go along with this article, is that I just put it uh, one inch ahead of the airplane. And the reason why I did that is because then all the numbers are positive and all the numbers are easy to work with, and it just kind of simplified things. Uh, but, but then, of course, you know, then you're going to come up with a value, you know, that's going to say seven inches. Well, keep in mind, it's seven inches from that point you know, that's one inch ahead of the airplane. So you kind of need to work your way back. Um, so I think what I did in the spreadsheet is that I did the computations from there, but then to figure out where the wing ne needed to go, I actually me measured from the firewall to the wing leading edge, which I thought was a lot easier to work with. And, you know, you, you, you know it's, it's, it's really easy to do that because you're subtracting basically the, the length of the motor and the, you know, the, the propeller shaft and, and all of that. So so anyway, um, just like you did before for the weight estimate, you want to go through one by one and, it, and, and come up with a value which is the distance to that datum line, okay? And, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You know, just there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Like, you know, if it's something that's, that's big, you know, let's say it's the fuselage. You know, the fuselage is eight, 36 inches long. Well, you know, for everything, you really want to measure from the, the middle of it. And in the case of the fuselage, that's 18 inches. So you're talking 18 inches, of course, you know, to the firewall, plus the length of the motor, plus that extra inch. And that's the value that you need to use for that. Uh, you know, for the tail, you know, that's going to be a pretty long value. Uh, for each servo, you know, they're not that big. You know, you can add, you know, half an inch or, or, or an inch if you want just to be a little, little bit more accurate, but they're not going to weigh a lot anyway. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of tricky areas with this. You know, one of them is, uh, you know, of course, if you're doing the computation to figure out where, where do you need to put the, the wing, how can you put a value into to do the, to, you know, to get the estimate to begin with? You know, so it's kind of a catch-22. And, and what I do is that I just take a guess. You know, I just say, okay, the wing is five inches back. And, you know, and, or, or let's say the CG, you know, it's going to be five inches back. Well, you know, let me back up the wing. The, the quarter cord is five inches back. So then I do all the computations and, and it turns out that CG is going to be seven inches back. So I'm off by two inches. So I say, okay, well, I got to push the wing back. Now, keep in mind, the wing by itself is a large portion of the weight of the total airplane. So it's, so you know, in this case, you're, you're, you would be off by two inches, but moving it back two inches is it's probably too much. You know, you might only need to move it back, move it back like one or one and a half. But so, but it's a spreadsheet, and that's the beauty of it. Of it, you know, it's really easy to change the number on a spreadsheet. It's a lot harder to move the wing. You know, once you build the airplane, and that's that's the whole reason why you're doing this. So change the number in the spreadsheet, do the computation again, and see where the CG, you know, the CG comes out this time. And, and you're trying to get that quarter cord and CG to be in the same spot. So, you know, so just go back and forth. It's not hard to do. The other thing is the battery. Because normally the battery is going to be, not only, it's probably, not only is it probably the single heaviest component, but it's also the one that you're going to be moving back and forth to, to get the CG on the real airplane where you really want it to be. Because, you know, th this, this balance computation, you know, the weight and balance, they're just estimates. 
So you're trying, you're trying to be close, but you're never going to be 100% right. So, so the battery is where you're going to get to move later, once you built it, to, to have everything work out the way that you really want. So, so what I do with my, with my battery in my computation is that I just assume that the battery was like right in the middle of the range that it can go. You know, in this case, you know, it's going to go between this, this, this front support and, and the leading edge of the wing. And, you know, that's a good, like, maybe four inches there. So I just said, okay, the, the, the center of the battery is going to be two inches from the front support, you know, which puts it right in the middle of the range that, it, that, that I can put it at. And I'm just playing it safe because I don't know, you know, is the airplane going to come out a little bit tail heavy or a little bit nose heavy? I really have no idea. Now, you know, of course, given my, my previous experience, airplanes always tend to come out a little bit too tail heavy. So you may want to uh, make believe that battery is a little bit uh, further back because then that will give you more headroom to move it forward. Hope that makes sense. So, uh, but that's it, you know, just, just make believe, you know, it's there in the middle, maybe a little bit further back. Uh, and then with the wing, you need to play with the numbers to, to, for them to come out right. So there's a little bit of a formula. Uh, you know, I'm gonna run through that now, but it's easy to just look at the spreadsheet. But then, but then what you're doing is that you're multiplying the weight of each component by that distance to the datum line. So that's a product. So then you do all, you know, multiply all those, all those numbers. Then you add up the, the product and you need to divide it by the total weight of the airplane. And that will give you the distance to, f to, the, uh, to the datum line, uh, be, you know, between the CG and the datum line. And again, you know, th that might be an inch in front of the airplane, so then you need to kind of work your way back to say, okay, that's the distance to the firewall. And then you need to, you know, take out a little bit from the wing, and you say, okay, that's the distance between the firewall and the leading edge of the wing. So, it's a little bit of computation. Just use my spreadsheet as an example. Just plug in your own numbers in there. That's, that's easy enough. And, um, you know, I, in the case of Kilo 3D, 3D, I think it was well worth to do the balance computation. And, but it's really up to you, you know, try it out, see how you like it, and see how, how accurate you are, and, you know, let me know how you like it, so, till next time.